For our first video of section 9.6, we're going to look at the ratio test, which is a test for absolute convergence. Again, you should be continuing to update what you know about all of the tests and series that we've learned in chapter 9, so be sure that you have updated it with the absolute convergence. The ratio test will tell us what to expect about convergence based on the ratio of a sub n plus 1 to a sub n. So just as we have before, we're going to look at a sub n as this whole function. And therefore, a sub n is 2 to the n over n plus 2 factorial. And then a sub n plus 1 would be replacing any n with n plus 1. So 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 2, which is n plus 3 factorial. So what I need to do is to find the limit of that ratio and see if it's less than 1, if it's equal to infinity or greater than 1, or if it's equal to 1, and then make a conclusion based on that outcome. So I'm going to find the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value, and again, I'm taking a sub n plus 1, which is 2 to the n, 2 to the n plus 1, divided by n plus 3 factorial, divided by, so I could write it as a giant fraction, but I'm going to divide it by 2 to the n over n plus 2 factorial. And again, that's all inside the absolute value. Now keep in mind, if I'm dividing with fractions, I'm really multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is actually 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 3 factorial times, and then I'm just going to flip that second fraction over, n plus 2 factorial over 2 to the n. Now this next part is all going to be algebra, and you don't have to rewrite it with like terms on top of like terms, but I'm going to just for this first example so that you can see what we're doing here. Remember that I've got two values in my numerator and two in my denominator, and I'm just going to separate them out so that like terms are with like terms. So notice I'm not changing which one's in the numerator and which one's in the denominator. I'm keeping it just as it is, but I'm writing them so they make a little more sense. Now, as I said, typically I will not do this step. I'm just doing it on this question so that we can see what's going to happen. My first, and again, I'm gonna show an obscene amount of work on this one just so we can see exactly what's happening. I'm going to first look at 2 to the n plus 1 and think about how could I rewrite that so that hopefully something cancels out with something in the denominator. So I know, based on my rules of exponents, that 2 to the n plus 1 can be written as 2 to the n times 2 to the first because the rule says that if you have the same base you can add exponents and therefore I'm just sort of doing that in reverse. So I have 2 to the n times 2 to the first over 2 to the n. And obviously we know what's going to happen with that next. And then I've got, and again, I'm going to do some trickery here. n plus 2 factorial is going to stay just like that. n plus 3 factorial, if I started to write out the terms, would be n plus 3, and then n plus 2, and n plus 1, and n, and n minus 1, or essentially, n plus 3 times n plus 2 factorial. So again, we've done a lot of that already in this course, so hopefully that you remember doing that. So the 2 to the n's will cancel, and the n plus 2 factorials will cancel, and so this leaves me with the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value, my numerator is 2 factorial, and my denominator is n plus 3, and not factorial in my denominator. Now I want to take a look at applying the limit as n approaches infinity. So obviously my numerator is 2 factorial, which is just 2. My denominator is n plus 3, and as the limit approaches infinity, that value will get larger and larger. The 
um, fraction itself will get smaller and smaller and smaller and give me a limit of zero. So in this case, because the limit is less than one, the series converges absolutely. So therefore, the series as n goes from zero to infinity of two to the n over n plus two factorial converges absolutely by the ratio test. Let's take a look at another example where we can use the ratio test. So we're going to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. The summation as n goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the n minus one times three halves to the n all over n squared. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is identify what is a sub n and what is a sub n plus one. So a sub n is my original function. And again, I'm not going to take the negative one into account, just as we did with the alternating series test. So this is three halves to the n over n squared, which means a sub n plus one is increasing each n value by one. So three halves to the n plus one, and then this is n plus one squared. So again, I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio or dividing those two terms. So the absolute value, and remember what happened last time. We started with three halves n plus one. So we're taking the a sub n plus one, which I'm just recopying from here. n plus one squared. And then remember before I wrote it with division, but let's just skip that step because it's always going to flip and become multiplication. So I'm always going to flip that second one over, the original. And now I have to start looking at what I can reduce. And so let's see what I can reduce. Just as I did before, and again, I'm not going to write like terms over one another because it's not necessary to do that. I am going to think about this as three halves to the n times three halves, just as I did before, so that as I'm working with the limit as n approaches infinity and I'm starting to reduce things, this will cancel with the other three halves to the n. So right now in my numerator, I have three halves n squared. And in my denominator, I have n plus one quantity squared. So please don't be the person who says, okay, well, I would just cancel these out and that would just leave me with one squared. Because if you do that, I will point and laugh and make fun of you because that is clearly not mathematically okay. So this is the binomial of n plus one quantity squared. So it is okay if you want to go ahead and multiply that out. So this is three halves, and I'm gonna put three halves as three over two like we normally would. And that gives me my n squared in my numerator. In my denominator, I'm going to FOIL this out because remember, this is n plus one times n plus one, and that's why we couldn't just cancel the n squared out. This is actually n squared plus two n plus one. And again, all being multiplied by two. Again, I'm looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of this. So this is three n squared. I hate it when people say this. And then this is two n squared plus four n plus two. What is the limit of this expression? Well, it's pretty easy for me to look at those influential terms and say the limit of this is three halves. Well, three halves is greater than one. Therefore, this series 
diverges by the ratio test. Let's look at one last example using the ratio test. Again, my first job is to determine that a sub n is going to be everything except for that alternating term. So a sub n is going to be n plus 2 over radical n, which means a sub n plus 1 is just n plus 1 plus 2, or n plus 3, over radical n plus 1. So I've just increased each n by 1. Now I need to find the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio. So the absolute value of n plus 3 divided by the square root of n plus 1. And then it's divided by a sub n, which means it's multiplied by the reciprocal. And in this case, this is a tough one because there is no th there's no way for me to cancel anything from the numerator and denominator. So when you have a situation like that, it's best to go back to the way I did it on my first example, where I cleaned things up by moving things around to put like terms together. So I'm putting n plus 3 over n plus 2, and I'm putting radical n over n plus 1, and so I can actually rewrite this as an entire radical together. So what has that done? Not much so far, but now I'm going to think about this as two separate values. So the limit as n approaches infinity of my first set, which is n plus 3 over n plus 2, and then plus the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the square root. And I really don't need the absolute value on the second one because we know square root is going to be positive, n over n plus 1. So let's look at each one separately. For my first one, again, I can just look at those influential terms of n over n, but if that doesn't make sense to you, it, really what we're doing, and I probably should have made this clear earlier, is I'm going to be taking everything here times 1 over n and everything here times 1 over n. So by doing that, I get the absolute value of n over n, which is 1, plus 3 over n. And my denominator is n over n, which is 1, plus 2 over n. And so we'll see that as my limit approaches, or as n approaches infinity, these guys are going to go away because those are going to approach 0, and I'm just going to be left with 1 over 1. So that's why all this time I've been saying, hey, just use those influential terms, because that's exactly what happened. Looking at my second one, I'm looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus 1. And again, I'm going to take this guy times 1 over n, and this guy, oops, this should be a multiplication, I'm sorry, not plus. Um, this guy times 1 over n. So from here, I now have times the square root of n times 1 over n is 1, n times 1 over n is 1, and 1 times 1 over n is 1 over n. Oops, I forgot my limit. So let's try that again. The limit as n approaches infinity of all of that that I just said. So the square root of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. And again, as I now apply the limit as n approaches infinity, I get 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. So what's my conclusion? Is that the test is inconclusive. And my strategy would then be to use another test. So probably the alternating series test in this case, because it's obviously an alternating series. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the root test.